I'm Ryan and I've been hacking things my whole life. So, on a side note, I went to the flea market today and I bought a few things. By the way, almost everything about this is not about this video. I bought a phone to take phone calls from the woods. I bought another phone to take phone calls from the garage. I got this Dremel here for five bucks. Kind of works. And, but the most important thing that does have to do with this video is I got a brushless Milwaukee drill with two lithium batteries that I'm going to power, power, power a DIY electric bike. All right, here's the plan. After I fixed the flat tire on this bike, I rode the bike and I loved it. But then I started thinking that I'm getting too old to pedal as much as I'm pedaling and all these cool e-bikes are coming out, electric bikes. So I said, why don't I power it with this drill? So I went home and I put this tire back here and I turned on this drive. I realized that this drill was powerful enough to drive this, perfect. So what I did is I designed and printed a flywheel tire, I call it a, a drill drive tire or something. The plans for this and you can purchase this are on my website that's linked below. But all it is is a cylinder with grooves cut out made in Fusion 360. It goes on top of the drill. You can then drive this tire even faster. And this is made with flexible 3D filament. Again, I'm selling these and the plans that are down below, or you could just make one yourself. If you just grab a something that's round like PVC and put a lot of epoxy in it, you can hack this yourself. All right, second of all, I had to figure out where I was gonna mount this, this drill. I could mount the drill up here or down here, but the fender was in the way. You may not have a fender in your way, and you certainly may not use a 1977 banana Schwinn bike seat or whatever. So I thought, why don't I put the drill in the back? So that's what I'm gonna do. The first thing I'm gonna do is get out my plywood and start hacking together a potential base for this drill to position it in the back. And then I'm going to quick tie it or maybe even possibly use bolts. Um, and then I'm gonna worry about how I'm gonna brace it. I'm thinking about bracing it with the actual hub bolt right down here. So let's get started. So after taking some quick dimensions, I started to, I'm gonna use this little cheap plastic ruler right here. But after taking some quick dimensions, um, I'm gonna first draw the outline of the drill. Right here. That's not good. That's not gonna be quick, just quick this. So there's my outside dimensions of the drill. Now what I'm gonna do is I don't want the top part to be involved with the drill at all um, over here. I don't want the battery to be involved with the base because I don't want to be able to pull the battery in and out. So I'm gonna draw a line here. Then I'm gonna come up here. Then I'm going to draw a line up here. And here, so now that is about the size of my first plate right there that I'm gonna make a base plate. Um, then I'm going to put a collar around this, or the arm, but the arm is gonna look like this. And it's gonna go around this um, back area here. So there's gonna be a slot inside of this wood here. That's gonna be the slot, and that's gonna be, I'm looking at the distance of the drill, it's just gonna go around there. So the arm will actually come up when the, when the drill's down, and then it will go around there. All right, once I got the prototype done with scrap wood, I, and I tested it, I went ahead and measured everything and put that inside of Illustrator. The way that I work in Illustrator is that I use the transform tool a lot. Um, the transform tool is right up here. This transform tool will allow me to set the distances between each other. Um, and also another thing that I do is I use artboards a lot. These artboards are basically little files inside of Illustrator. And then when I go to File, Save As, I save an SVG that goes over to um, my laser cutter Glowforge. So um, that is, uh, my daughter just texted me, um, that is my process. I went ahead and got every part 
taken care of. Um, I did do a lot of trial and error to get these parts right. Um, I have a whole strapman of old um, parts that did not work. I probably uh, spent at least the amount of material in the whole build. So some things I got right, some things I got wrong. But I will tell you, laser cutter, all the technology in the world, you will have to try things out and then um, adapt them, absolutely. And, and, and so far, um, I'm having a few issues with almost everything, but it's all tightening up. The way that I have tons of extra holes, I was able to get this to work. And once that happened, I sent that over to the Glowforge um, using the web app, and we started cutting things out on um, the Glowforge, which I absolutely love. I've now had it for four to six months and zero problems. Um, I couldn't be happier with it as far as a quality build. It's the same exact one. I haven't had any returns. It's I use it all the time. So awesome product. Um, not a sponsored video. I just happen to have a link below which will give you a discount and I get a little kickback. But other than that, I have no sponsor. The fact is I love that machine. It's my favorite machine next to my Silhouette Cameo Vector Cutter because that's only 150 bucks. So, um, and I have a couple videos down below on that. Um, and I use Illustrator for that too. So let's uh, get on to building this bike. All right, go up to the laser cutter. Cutter, including the little trigger puller that I'm that's going to pull the trigger from a throttle that I'll have at the handlebars to adjust the speed. So now I'm going to go over all of the parts that I that I printed out, and you can see the complete design uh, as it's coming through. Okay, now that I got this piece all cut out and all the slots, went ahead and tested it out and. Cut a groove in for the back of the seat, and then the it's going to be mounted right about there. And this goes in here like this. And the drill goes like that. Okay? So you have another one that comes up there, and the top plate goes here. All right, so those are the arms, the plates. I have these separators here. You can tell that I use as much scrap wood as possible when I cut this up, stuff out. So here I go. I'm going to put, I have a, in case these bolts, these holes were a little too uh, small, I have my uh, 3 8 inch drill bit here. These are 3 8 inch bolts. I think these are uh, five inches long, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, here's my three eighths inch. I have two of these. I have a brushed Makita brushless and a brushed Makita drill. This is the sound of the brushless. This is the sound of the brushed. Hmm. Starting to think, I'm starting to realize why this guy sold this. This one's got a break. This one does not. I have a brush and key, brushless, and a brush and key drill. This is the sound of the brushless. This is the sound of the brush. Hmm. I'm starting to realize I sold this. This one's got a break. This one's not. I get hard, but whatever. Okay. So now, uh, now the phone. The back of these bolts, I'm not sure what these bolts are called. There's a black here, but we're going to be able to disassemble the circuit. I think that's it. And the wing is going to be done because I'm going to use these little square mounts, and this particular type of bolt on the end. So that's going to be able to be locked on the other side. Okay, so from the bottom, I first want to put in my side pieces, the arms. And the next thing I want to do is I want to put a bolt all the way through this hole. This particular time, I'm going to just use a quick washer there. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to put this
Okay, here's a video start. I don't know, so not with that sign. Okay, if you pop the watch, stay in between there, so I'm gonna have to watch this in between this area here. What is that? So now I have that piece there. So this comes up here. This is really tight because, whoa, there we go. So that's that. So now I'm gonna bring this arm up here. And that's going to be a bottle, so I'll take that through the bottle. And I will put a, um, because I can put a hole on the outside just so it's soft. Now that's not the washer. It's there. Now I can put this here. Check my grip. Looks good. This is, I think this is a six inch hole. Right here. Now I can bring a wing up here. And I'm going to tighten it down loosely. Okay. Good. So, oh, that's interesting. So, I want to pull through. I want to pull through. I have a nice tight button. So I have to pull through my six inch. Okay, so I have a... Um, so I'm gonna put one more up here, um, well, I'm saying not the real, so... Okay guys, this is it. Um, I'm going to take my final ride in this thing. Obviously with the intro, it didn't work that well, but I went ahead and put um, uh, thread lock on the, uh, you can see by the blue right there, I put thread lock on the screw. I don't know how long that takes to drive, but um, uh, I'm going to see how fast this thing goes. And um, so I'm going to do this on my phone. I don't know how this is going to go, but uh, I'm going to fire this thing up. See how it does. But um, here we go. Thanks for watching this long. Appreciate you guys. Hope you've already subscribed, but here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Whoa! 